Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrated pan and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And once again, this is the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kale, and this is episode 72 for November the 23rd, 2020. And I am here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hello, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Before we got started, Constance was yawning, so... Uh, if respond, it's because, You're not supposed to tell on me now. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think our conversation was exciting. I don't know. <laughs> okay. We're I, think it's, I think it's the Benadryl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This week's theme came out. It's a little bit more about art history. At this time, an American artist we're going to talk about. And it came about in an unusual manner. A uh, An artist friend of ours that was uh, had taken a course with us, a... Uh, uh, and Farley Gaines, he made a comment on one of my uh, pieces of work that I posted on Facebook that it remind, reminded her of the American artist Ivan Albrecht, which I had never heard of before. So I Googled him, looked him up. I said, yeah, okay. Eh, it's a little bit like this. And then I researched some more on YouTube and found an excellent documentary that uh, spoke of, uh, he came from an artist family and told a little bit about the story of Ivan Albrecht, actually, is the, the title of the documentary. And it's a very recent one. It's uh, from the, uh, their, uh, the Ivan Albrecht uh, Museum in uh, Warren, Illinois, which is where he uh, uh, grew up. And so if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, you will see the links to uh, and uh, the, of the uh, documentary about him, and also there's a short video of uh, displaying some of his work. You know what we're talking about, Ivan Albrecht and Diane. What are your comments about Ivan Albrecht? What do you think about his work? Well, I had heard of him, but I wasn't really that familiar with his work. Um, although I, I remember after I was watching the video, I do remember. <clears throat> seeing some of the um, paintings that they showed but um his his work is very um i want to say gritty <laughs> it reminds me of like the the pictures you see of the industrial revolution and that all was going on and just you know the kind of dark and um very gritty he showed a lot of people um 
older than they actually were <laughs> when they posed for him. Yeah. And a lot of people weren't too happy with, <laughs> with the outcomes of how they looked. <laughs> so I'm, I'm surprised he got as many um, people to pose for him as he did. And he, they were saying how long it took him to do paintings. It was like <laughs> a really long time. Yeah, oh, my God. What was it, uh, Constance? You said it earlier. Uh, how long? A month to, to paint one square inch? Is that what I heard of them yeah, saying? Yeah, something like that. It was a really long time. The yeah. one woman, it was like two and a half years she was sitting for him. She finally said, forget it. I'm not doing <laughs> this anymore. <laughs> so. And so I guess he had nothing left but her hands or something. Yeah. So he, he had made a plaster cast of her hands. So she didn't have to come back anymore. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what was interesting, what I found interesting in the documentary is that he came from an artist family. His father was a fairly well-known artist. You know, mm-hmm. he, in fact, and, and, and he had a twin brother, Melvin, which I thought was kind of neat to name Ivan and Melvin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, they were identical twins. And his his brother was also an artist who went into more sculpting, uh, doing sculpture. He also did a few paintings, but he was mostly uh, sculpt, you know, sculpture. And his uh, father had a very uh, heavily influenced. And from the time the boys could walk, he had him in his studio with him working on their own pieces of work. I mean, talk about yeah, they were now they were preemies also, like mm-hmm. your grandchild, which is really preemies. unusual for back then that they survived. Yeah, because you know they were like three pounds a piece when they were born, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, they they were they must have really taken very good care of them because it's it's hard for them to be preemies like that, and they don't have us what they call it NICU hospital NICU thing in the hospitals back then you know to help the the preemies live you know so yeah they didn't have incubators and whatnot you know and uh, the uh, i mean this is in the you know in the mid 19th century you know mm-hmm. but when, when he was born when he was born like what eight eighteen i can't even remember now she have took notes but it was pretty much the mid 19th century and the fact that he was even survived is, is a bit of a miracle but what's yeah. What struck me about his uh, the first part of the discussion, of course, was on uh, on the, the Adam Albrecht, which is his father, who was a, pretty much a prominent artist, and a family came from or origins of uh, Germany, and they were actually uh, gun makers. Yeah, oh yeah, I've forgotten about that. Yeah. So his grandfather, you know, uh, who uh, uh, was a pretty much well known as a gun maker, so the family, you know. It, but uh, and what I like is uh, the uh, the story of Adam, uh, his uh, his father and family. They moved to uh, no, it was in, where was, no, they moved to Iowa first. Yeah, I think they were in Iowa. They had a farm in Iowa, and of course, boys were expected to go out and work with their fathers in the farm. <laughs> what drove Adam to be an artist was he didn't like that. He did not. He knew he would, did not want to be a farmer. <laughs> it was <laughs> labor. <laughs> so he he uh, you know went the artist way and convinced his father you know to send him to uh, art school and you know and he developed his art town. That was his main motivation because he was not going to uh, you know make a living as a farmer. But he also was a very astute uh, businessman. And he did something which I have never ever heard of. What was guys remember? Running paintings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought he did had pretty good entrepreneurial skills doing doing that, you know, right because he didn't really want to part with his paintings, so he would just rent them or, you know, I think they had made prints or something from them and sold them too. First one so, lithographic prints, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and and was uh, very and he did he was a very uh, artist entrepreneur he had all kinds of things going on you know to to support the family and yeah you know, as you know as a working artist he didn't depend on people to buy you know to buy his works you know right yeah 
You know, and it was interesting when they said he, he used, they said he was common as saying, when you rent the pain, it's a, it, it's a bet on my life. But if he dies before the rent, they get to keep the painting. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> he was like 94 years old. So. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Now he still had that money coming in every month, you know, every month. Yeah. yeah. That makes a big difference when you have something steady like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so Ivan and Melvin, you know, grew up in a, in a very, uh, you know, a semi, somewhat prosperous family. Also, what struck me was uh, Adam had come up with this building design that was so cool because he was, he was very much into a plain air artist. <laughs> and so he had constructed this building because in, uh, when, they, when they moved to, you know, in Iowa and also they moved to Illinois, you know, to Warren, Warrenville in Illinois, um, you know, the winters can get very rough. And he wasn't about to stay in. And he had this building constructed on these wheels and he can move it around. It's like a mobile studio. Did you guys see that? I mean, I was like, uh, yeah, I, for, I had forgotten about that's the, where he had the, um, that little yeah, like bad a, thing. Almost like a glass house on the side of his house. Yeah. It looked kind of like, like a greenhouse, except yeah, for kind of like a greenhouse. And it had wheels on it. And he could move it around. He could, I didn't know that. I didn't catch that he was able to move that around. I thought he just had that. Was most, I think, I think there was one on his house, but then there was also a portable one that he moved around. That's pretty cool. And he can move, he can move it around, you know, and, and, and outside, you know, had a heater in there and everything and, you know, and had a cold, <laughs> stove, had a cold stove or whatever, and a kerosene heater, you know, and, and uh, <laughs> I mean, ingenious. The guy was, you know, was brilliant. So, uh, you know, Ivan and Melvin, they came from this father, you know, so they came from this, so they had this big, uh, yeah, they had a lot to live up to. And in the end, Ivan ended up surpassing both his brothers in, uh, as far as, uh, their careers, you know, uh, caught with the, with the documentary is that Ivan Albrecht was, um, he had entered in several different contests and had won prizes and was developed a statue as, as an artist, but he really didn't sell that many paintings during his lifetime. In fact, when he got older, he donated them all to the Chicago Art Institute. You know, they have they have several of his of his right works there. I don't know, a hundred some pieces, you know, that he donated before his death. That, I'm surprised he got that many done since it took him so long to paint them. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's funny. He must have been painting all the time. So, you know, yeah. and and what what led to his. Uh, uh, what I also enjoyed that led to his uh, further in his career was uh, Hollywood. And when they were making that uh, horror movie, uh, the uh, the picture of Dorian Gray, which I remember seeing at one time a long time ago, you know, but I didn't think much of it. But then it kind of got my attention that <laughs> the, story, the story of Dorian Gray is uh, it was a, a uh, Oscar Wilde wilder ad adaptation uh was this man who this young man who um <clears throat> was i think he was an artist no 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 he no he had an artist friend who painted his portrait and he had basically made a de made a deal with the devil <clears throat> that he could live his his life any way he wanted without worrying about his soul but that the painting would change and, and he would stay the same and he wouldn't get older. Yeah. Would, right. And which is the perfect for uh, the style of painting that Ivan Albrecht did because he, he, mm -hmm. the, story well, the, pain, the painting showed all the faults and the wrong deeds and all that stuff that the guy did. That, um, Absolutely. He did. And as the movie <laughs> scene made, Ivan Albrecht was doing that with the painting. He was changing it as they, you know, with the movie. And they said that he also had a contract. Uh, he got his brother, Melvin. You know, and in reality, Melvin did the, did the first painting of the young man as uh, Dorian Gray as a young man. But uh, through the, uh, they didn't know it, but I guess the studio had also hired some Polish artists to do that. And through the cutting and whatever, anyhow, his, his brother Melvin got, his painting got cut. <laughs> yeah. 
there was a bit of a of a sibling rivalry, you know, between the two. You know, of course they were you know, identical twins, and you know, all I'm sure you know all twins you know go through this a bit of a ri- rivalry. But Ivan was astute like his father as an entrepreneur because he had signed his contract because to promote the movie they wanted to take the painting and display it across the country. The studio wanted, to, and he had a, in his contract. He got paid every time they displayed that painting. So he, <laughs> That's really cool. He he got he made a lot of money off of. Yeah. <laughs> he was pretty. Yeah. He was very smart that way. I mean, and it's good to think you don't think about that. But then he managed to hang on to his paintings. But then he always managed to figure out a way to make money from each painting on a, in an ongoing way, which. It was very, you know, helped him yeah. to paint like he really wanted to instead of, you know, having to do what somebody else wanted him to, you know. Yeah, I really enjoyed uh, the, and I like I said, I never heard this artist before. So it was, it was enjoyable to, uh, you know, to, to be made aware of, uh, of, of his, uh, of his, his style and, and his technique, you know, and, and uh, his little, Little uh, intricacies, you know. <laughs> yeah, and even though he, they said he was, you know, fairly famous, of course he was famous in the er, you know, early twentieth century, you know, and everything. And that's usually uh, what happens, unfortunately, with some of these artists. You know, they they have a, a blurb on the scene for maybe you know twenty, thirty years or, so, or or more, and then they just kind of. Yeah, you know, they just kind of disappear unless somebody, some museum does a retrospective on them or something, you know. Uh, what uh, other opinions? What else are we going to talk about? <laughs> but Ivan Albrecht. He, he kind of leave, um, branched off into doing um, printmaking stuff, too, after a while. So he was doing a lot of black and white type um, work later on. Yeah. His brother pretty much stuck with sculpture mostly, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and, and the yeah, there was a, a bit of a uh, like I said, a, a rivalry between between the two, and they didn't speak to each other for like twenty five years, and they were they were both in their eighties before they actually came together. And this was like in the nineteen nineteen sixties, I think it was. You know, they they uh, or no no, it was in the sixties when they split. It was after. You know, they split basically because of the movie movie deal. I guess that you know, and it was in the seventies or some sometime in the seventies when they uh, nineteen seventy seventy eight or something like that. I think it was when they uh, and they were both in their eighties. They were eighty you know, years old, and they had both uh, you know they had been gotten married you know and everything. And, and there was a photograph they showed us in the museum of uh, they were in a reunion. They had come together and. Uh, it was the first time they had spoken to each other in like 25 years, you know, but they were still close as they were growing up, you know, they protected each other. Right? Cause, yeah. Well, they were twins. I mean, yeah. it was just something about Ken. <laughs> in fact, uh, in his uh, latter years, uh, Ivan, as he, when he was older, he was doing a bunch of self portraits of, of himself. And one of the, uh, the curators, uh, or historians suggested that quite possibly they were portraits of his brother Melvin mm-hmm. during a time before you know they had uh, had uh, you know been speaking and he was missing his brother so he was basically doing paintings of his brother instead of him even though you can't tell they're identical twins <laughs> yeah that's true that would be pretty uh, cool to be able to have somebody that you could look at to paint instead of having to look in the mirror and paint you know i've done a couple of self-portraits and it's not easy to look in the yeah <laughs> and paint you know i was thinking about doing another one but i haven't gotten the nerve up to start one again yet i haven't got the nerve to try you know a self-portrait i've been <laughs> <laughs> i'm no spring chicken so it won't be as <laughs> i won't look as good as i did in the other one so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, you know that's what, lots of snow on the mountain <laughs> i still i still have a problem problem and like i said i can 
when it comes to human beings, I can paint a face, I can draw a face where it looks like a human and everything, but it doesn't look like the person that I am <laughs> trying to portray. I have not got, maybe if I did it more often, probably, but I get frustrated, you know. And yeah, I, that's something you just have to work at, you know. Um, it doesn't, it's not always easy. I mean, that's why you have sketchbooks, so you can do lots of sketches, sketch studies to finally get to that place where you feel comfortable wasting paint on it. <laughs> yeah. And we did lots of life drawing when I was in college. I, well, I had life drawing three days a week. So yeah, we had to do a lot of Yeah, and they give you like five minutes to do to Oh, do we were sketch. doing like 30 second, you know, and oh, then, wow. like, you know, real quick, a lot of yeah. gestural drawing, all different, level, I mean, months of time. And then we had, you know, stuff for homework. It was a weird... Uh, had a roommate yeah. <laughs> i had a roommate and well she was in college she had me pose for her she just had to do all these sketches all of a sudden and i just spent the whole night sitting there in different different <laughs> uh poses for her while she was doing filling up her sketchbook because she was supposed to have been oh. working out it all <laughs> semester she didn't <laughs> so it was oh, cute my <laughs> oh uh. my god I guess I'm just not a disciplined enough artist. I got, I got to discipline myself more to you know, do. Uh, well, anytime no. you, you, when you have to do anything that you have to get the proportions and all that right, otherwise it doesn't work, it takes more time. So, you know, you have to um, spend time practicing and learning. Like we learned all the bone structure and the muscles and, I mean, you know, layers and layers, like how it comes out from the, the bone and all that. So you knew, like, how the muscles worked so that when they posed in different positions, you knew, like, you know, you could you could really depict them where the muscles were. And that cool. is, that, that jig is a memory that the, how uh, Ivan Alberg developed his style is exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. During World War One, he went into the military. And uh, also, Melvin also went to the military. Melvin went as a, uh, I think he was a, a guard or something. Or he was, you know. But yeah. Ivan was an artist for the medical, medical corps. And he had to make hundreds and hundreds of drawings and paintings of, uh, of men who had been wounded and corpse and and so he really did detailed work of the uh, bones the bone structures and the flesh and everything and, yeah i saw some of those pictures that he did and you could see where they had opened up a spot and he just did the sketch of what it looked like while it was open and so uh, that and that's that's how he kind of I, I think that's how he developed his style you know he just kind of you know, continued after after the military when he got out you know and uh, that dark style. I still love the stories about how, you know, he, um, they were in, you know, in that little town in, uh, in, uh, Warren, his art career was launched from there because he had many of the residents there were posed for him. Mm -hmm. models. And, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, he, he, they had money. He paid them. Yeah. He paid them to sit for him, you know, for hours and hours and hours on end and had to come <laughs> Cause he took such a long time, you know, to complete his work. And then some of the people who actually commissioned him, uh, to do, um, portraits <laughs> <laughs> did not like the portraits afterwards. <laughs> that does happen. Even if you are an artist who actually gets it to look pretty much like the person, which Ivan's work looks a lot different than the photographs, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, people they're... can still not really be, because they're not used to seeing themselves the way you see them. They see themselves the way they see themselves, you know, and sometimes, I mean, I had, I really hadn't had a whole lot of problems with, except for one lady. She really didn't like the way she says, do I look like that? And I said, well, that's how, I guess that's <laughs> how I see you. <laughs> He says, well, okay. <laughs> you know, and then another, another, some other people picked up a portrait I did one time. And the, generally when they have you do portrait painting and you're teach you're taught portrait painting, they tell you to not make the lips really, really light or 
is like skin tone to actually put a little lipstick, especially on women, you know, and I, she didn't like that. I had that much lipstick on her mom's and it wasn't very dark. <laughs> so she had me make the lips a little bit lighter before they took it home. So I said, no problem. You know, I want you to be happy. But, Cause you look kind of. Yeah. I don't think dead. he would, I don't think he was the type to change things for people. <laughs> if they didn't no, like. he wasn't. Uh, uh, it was all, he was, he was it was him his, his even work the was one his work. woman he, he did that one woman she was like 20 something 25 or something and she looked like she was 80 in the picture I was like oh my god the poor woman <laughs> I, don't, I, well, I don't think I would have my portrait done by him unless he did give me a lot of money to sit for him I may have done it that way you know if yeah. I was hungry sometimes you get hungry and you have to do stuff you know <laughs> He paid you, okay. Then it'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that that that's what fascinated me that also that he took so long, you know, like you know what a month just to do a a an in, a, a one inch square, you know, area. You know, it's like oh my god. You get used to doing things fast when you're outside doing plain air, and. Yeah. And you don't, back in the studio, you actually, if you're so used to doing plain air because you have to do it fast and you do a smaller and faster that you forget that in, while you're in the studio, you can actually slow down and not have to, to be that fast about your work, you know, that. Um, well, like I've been talking about for the last, yeah, what, the last month that in my own art, I'm slow, I'm slowing myself down, but I'm not going to slow down like him. <laughs> I really would. I would just completely lose interest. In fact, I've have found that now that I've slowed down a little bit, I've almost lost interest. Like, okay, I just finished today uh, that painting uh, of that rose that I started using that process of, of applying oil, you know, oil, uh, oil glazing, you know, at a little bit at a time and then slowly. All right, I could have finished it last week because it was already drying, me, but I just couldn't get myself motivated. Yeah, <laughs> finally I look, kept looking at it. Well, I better finish this. And it only took me the the last final things I wanted to fix on it was only a ten minutes, and boom, it's done. Then I photographed it. You know, but <laughs> I got to think about it. You know, if if I wait too long, I'm just gonna lose the inspiration because that's like you know stefan bauman talks about you got to paint in the now you got to paint in the you know you're inspired whatever inspired you you know so there's yeah that and also what the longer it takes like when you when you leave a painting for a while you you know you're working on other stuff and you're getting better than you were then <laughs> when you come back to something it's kind of hard to pick it up again because it's not you're you're like further and there, you have to change a lot more because mm -hmm. it's, it's not up to where you're at now <laughs> so yeah. very good point yeah so i don't if i if i keep stuff down to you know just a few days or a week or two weeks and there's no way i could paint like ivan albrecht <laughs> <laughs> like a year. I've, I've taken i've taken a few months i can't remember the longest i haven't really kept track of the time but I'm, I'm i know i've done some that are several months long working, yeah i'm still working on a calf one that i've started but it's a really big one but i've got to make myself sit back down and straighten out the hips on it and stuff so yeah well i'm not talking about like even a painting that i left and come back but i've i've worked on a painting for that long like <laughs> you know every day kind of oh yeah or, or as often as you can you know waiting for things to dry or whatever but regularly anyway and it's taken you know months but yeah. I, I work faster now than I used to when I first started painting it was it was a long time and then we'd take it into class or whatever and you get critiqued and you know back home and work on it some more work on yeah <laughs> so yeah exactly you learn a lot doing that and it is so hard to keep your motivation because you see all these other things you want to be painting you know I that's and you don't have time to do it if you're working on this other one. So it's like, you know, and, and uh, that, that is something that I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get out of, out of doing the sequential mode, 
where I could do multiple, you know, work on multiple people. Um, and that's, that's my goal for uh, 2021 is to get myself to a point to where I can, uh, I can work on two or three pieces uh, at a time and slowly, you know, so that, uh, uh, this is just about ready to wrap up this episode. However, this coming week, this coming Thursday, yeah, this is Thanksgiving, and I think it's a good time during during this uh, uh, episode of the Artist Friends Podcast, episode seventy two for November the twenty third, and let's uh, talk a little bit about what we're thankful for. You guys want to start off? What about you, Diane? What are you thankful for? Well, I'm thankful for this for you and Constance <laughs> that we meet every week. I mean, that's yes. it's been really nice to be able to do that to have some you know other people that kind of can relate to what we're all going through and we can kind of bounce ideas off of and stuff. So that um, I'm really thankful for that. Um, but it you know, this year has been so crazy for everybody. I guess it's just kind of. <laughs> at this point, I'm just happy we've all, we've all made it through so far without getting sick. <laughs> yeah, none of us have been sick, which you, you oh my know, God. More, blessing. more wood. That yeah. is a big blessing because we, we're all uh, kind of like in that in that higher risk group, you know, age age group. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, and not only am I the age group, but I'm also the group of people who have, you know, had problems in the past that would make me more susceptible. I have a compromised immune system. Uh, so, you know, it's, whenever I go out, I have the mask on, uh, you know, so it's just, it's I'm really grateful that we haven't been sick. You're thankful for that. What, what else are you thankful for? Um, it's, it's been, it hasn't been, it's been a crazy year or so, but I've had a little bit more time probably to work on my art, which has been nice. <laughs> so, and, you know, I got into the OPA show and some, a couple other things. So it hasn't been all that horrible. I mean, as far as artists, we're kind of used to being on our own anyways. So we're not mm -hmm. as affected, I think, as some people have been. Yeah, a lot so of I guess we're, we're really fortunate in that too. Can't deal with the isolation. As to me, I, I, I like it. I mean, I, Nothing's changed for me as far as that goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Constance, what about you? You already said for you the fact that you're uh, you haven't caught COVID. Yeah, that and Will hasn't caught. Nobody in my family has has gotten COVID. So I'm really grateful for that. And I'm grateful for the to, for you guys especially because this is really great to get together and talk about stuff and and. Uh, re-educate my or each other about different things and uh and for this i'm grateful for my studio and for all the little animals that i have <laughs> and it's a really nice you know so yeah i feel really grateful this year it's been a very good year as far as i'm concerned even though there is covid you know we've had a pretty good year with me same as always i'm very thankful and grateful for you too. You meet with me. You, uh, you know, give me input on uh, what subjects to uh, to select for our conversation. But uh, for the most part, you let me wing it. And at times it's frustrating because I'm scratching my head trying to come up with something interesting. But <laughs> I seem to work it out. So I'm very mm -hmm. grateful for you know for your inputs and for your your meeting. The number one thing that I'm very, very, very grateful for is that my my new grandson over in Italy. I mean, he was born premature, two months premature, uh, in the in the middle of at the beginning of the COVID nineteen crisis over in, in Bologna, Italy, and people were literally dying around him, and this little fellow survived. And he is kicking, and he is such a joy to his to his mother and our family. He is he is just alive and well, and, and brings so much joy. And I'm just so, so grateful and thankful for that because it just would have destroyed my daughter had uh, she had uh, problems because she was looking so forward. If she had him, she was substantially older and at a high risk herself of even having a baby. So that. 
that alone, you know, was, uh, was, was something that she had wanted a, a child for such a long time. And, uh, so he is, I might do video calls with him. Uh, you can just tell she is thoroughly enjoying her little boy. He is spoiled rotten. <laughs> He's so cute. Yeah. See, and, and the thing about it is what's interesting is, uh, I'm hoping that, uh, later on when I can get over there, I'm going to tell him about his great, great grandfather. He has a direct connection because his great, great grandfather, my grandfather, was born in 1918 in the middle of the Spanish flu pandemic. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they have a lot in common. He was a preemie. He was they have a lot in common. <laughs> yeah. That, that's really cool. Yeah, and I sent pictures of him when he was uh, younger. <laughs> and there is a direct, there, you can, a direct resemblance. You can see the resemblance. So I, I want to uh, someday to be able to tell him the story of his great great grandfather. He has a direct line to uh, <laughs> surviving, you know. So, uh, and uh, if my great great grandfather hadn't hadn't survived, I wouldn't be here today. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very very thankful for that. And and with this COVID crisis, I think I didn't get sick, you know, and that I've been able to uh, substantially. Um, I have a reduction in income, but I'm still surviving. I'm able to, to live, I'm able to pay my rent, and I'm able to buy food and buy paint supplies. I'm still continue continue my art practice. So uh, that, and the thing about this, uh, with this uh, crisis, I'm thankful that it made us kind of return back to what's really important in life. You know, our family and our friends. You know, keeping in contact and. Uh, Making sure they're, you know, they're doing okay and everything. And, uh, if there is a silver lining, that's it. And, and this, you know, we still have a long way to go to get through this crisis. But, yeah. But we're, uh, you know, hey, pick it out, you know. And uh, I come from, from tough stock. My my great grandfather, my grandfather was a farmer, and his father was a farmer. Come from. Uh, you know, solid, hard stock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My little grandson, he's a survivor. He's, he's got that bloodline. <laughs> so, so uh, I, not to be, I have another grandson. My youngest daughter had it. So I have a younger one who's also, both my daughters you know, live in Italy. And uh, my uh, other grandson, he is uh, 12 years old now and he is doing well too. He's still, I mean, when, Last time I talked to him, he uh, he was so happy that he uh, uh, had solved the Rub Rubik's cube and was holding it up. And so, yeah, <laughs> and, he, and he's a budding artist. <laughs> a budding artist, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the bloodline is you know continued, and someday I'm <laughs> over there and hold a private art class with just my two my two grandsons. <laughs> mother's out and we're gonna we're gonna have have a ball that's 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 the future you know i'm looking forward to so i just you know I'm very thankful that covid crisis i mean and they're doing well nobody's sick in the family everybody's doing well so uh it's a uh, it's a good thing to do. it is after all you know yeah. so that's uh that's that's what's important yeah okay Let's wrap this episode up of the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 72, for Monday, November the 23rd, 2020. And I want to wish both Diane and Constance a very happy Thanksgiving. And I'll say bye to you now and let Diane say bye to everybody. Hi, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening, and happy Thanksgiving. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much for listening, and have a very safe, happy Thanksgiving. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. 
Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kell at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.